Hi, I'm Deborah Atkinson, and this is Flipping 50, where I help you reset, tune up, and prepare for your second and better half with the vitality and the energy that you want. I help women in every episode answer questions about what to eat, how to move, and make key lifestyle changes so that they can get the most results in the least amount of time. Send me your question at flipping50tv.com and if I choose your question for the show, I'm gonna send you some exclusive access to some great gifts and goodies I'll tell you a little bit more about later. Even if I don't choose your question, I'm gonna send you my Muscles in Minutes guide to toning those hard to tone areas full of illustrations, how to, tips, what to avoid, how to modify, and you're gonna to wanna to get that for today's show. Because today's question is from Brenda, who writes, I get confused on a workout routine. Do I need to work out every day, but do something different, or just work out every other day? Because this is where I get confused, I don't do anything consistent. Brenda, thanks for the question, it's a great one. And I'm gonna help you and you at home simplify your workout with three Ps. We're gonna learn how to prioritize what your goals are and then plan what five components you're gonna plug into every workout and then plug all of that into the time that you have available to use, whether it's 10 minutes or an hour. So go grab something to take notes and we're gonna get started with Workout Design School. So Brenda, the first P in your three Ps is prioritize. We need to know what your goals are. Usually for women, they're one of three things, weight loss or weight management and fat reduction, bone density, and usually that comes from a doctor saying, you need to do some weight bearing exercise and get some weight training into your routine. And the last one is functional fitness. So you might have an injury, say a shoulder, an elbow, and you have to do some specific exercises to get that back to full function before you can do something else. Or let's say you wanna play better golf. You're gonna to wanna to focus on exercises that help you do that most of all. Now, most of us don't wanna choose just one goal and you can have it all right now, but we do need to rank them because that'll help us decide which exercises in which order matter most. So we're gonna focus on weight loss or fat optimism, functional fitness, and last, bone density will be helped, but it won't be our number one focus. Those are your priorities. So Brenda, the second P in your three Ps is to plan. And there are five components in every workout that I want you to do consistently. Number one is a general warm up. You gotta elevate that core temperature. So you're gonna do some walking, jogging, you're gonna get on your treadmill, or you're gonna go up and down the stairs with a laundry basket. That works too. The second is a more specific functional warm up, and it's where we're gonna insert some of those functional exercises for you, making you limber up those joints, but also crossing your right brain and your left brain and working on a little balance. Then it's your main set, and that's where we really focus on the real work. Next comes core. So between your knees and your shoulders is officially core. Most of us think of it as our abs and our lower back. We're gonna do a couple exercises for that, and I'm gonna show you some things that'll really help tune up and reduce the amount of back spasms you have. Last is a cool down, basically a reverse of your warm up. Little flexibility, and then a little movement so you begin recovery even before you're done with the workout today. Brenda, the third P in your three Ps is plug. You're gonna take the priorities that you determined, the plan for your workout today, and plug that into your available time twice a week. Monday and Thursday is ideal because it gives you two days of rest between when you recover and you actually get your results during that rest time so that you can work harder on the days that you do exercise. So it can be overwhelming to think about the exercises, the sequence, the how many sets, repetitions. Let me break it down for you. So basically, we've got major muscle group exercises and that's what we wanna focus on. We're gonna do pairs in this example. We've got a squat and a row. 
We've got a lunge and a bent arm pullover, and we've got lunges and chest press. Then toward the bottom, we've got smaller muscle groups. Not so important if you're short on time, those are gonna fall away. So if you've got short amount of time, Brenda, one way to polish that off and get all your major muscle groups is to take a leg exercise, a pull exercise like a row, and a push exercise like a chest press. And repeat those three exercises three times, and you'll be done in 10 minutes or less. If you've got more time, choose three more exercises and do the same repeat, say a rear lunge, a bent arm pullover, and another variation of a lunge like a side lunge. And then last, hamstring curls, bicep curls, and tricep presses, they're your small muscle groups. So remember, if you run out of time, they fall away. This might be a workout number three option that you could take. You take all your leg exercises and do them in a row. And then repeat that two, three, even four times if you're feeling ambitious and you have the time. Then you do the same thing with all of your upper body exercises. And you repeat them two to four times, either including small muscle groups like biceps and triceps, or shorter on time, those small ones drop off. So Brenda, you know what the parts are. Now we're gonna plug them into your actual workout. Number one was your warm up. So you've got a general warm up already done. You've done the elliptical, you've walked, you've danced around in your living room for five to 10 minutes or that darn laundry basket. Now it's functional warm up too. And first thing I want you to do is to juice the joints. For you to minimize lower back spasms when you exercise, I'm gonna have you juice that hip joint so you're good and limbered up. So use a chair for a little balance and you're gonna take side swings. Just let your foot go side to side, nice and long, easy from your hip joint, about five times. Then you're gonna take it forward and back. It's all right for you to flex, give and go a little bit through your core. Shouldn't be any difficulty or challenge discomfort through that lower back. Next up, it looks the same, but I want you to swing from your knee and you'll feel the focus just a little differently in the small of your back. Now I want you to imagine you're going over the hurdles and you're gonna do that about five times and then reverse directions. So you've got that hip good and limbered up and then repeat on your other leg. And the next one, for you at home, if you've got balance issues, or for you, Brenda, so that we can wake up that lower back and reduce and minimize any chance that you're gonna have lower back spasms during your main set is a single leg touch. So on this one, you're gonna stand on one leg. I'm on my left, reaching with my opposite or my right hand. I want you to focus at a spot, six inches, 12 inches, and 18 inches from the toe of the foot you're standing on. Here we go. And repeat that three times on the same side without putting your toe down until you switch and go to the second side. Now it's time for your main set and we've already shown you all the major muscle group exercises in episode three. Go take a look at that now. Congratulations, you're done with your main set and now it's time for core. We wait for core till the very end because we need the core to be fresh and strong to support major muscle group exercises. Now Brenda, to reduce back spasms, one of the exercises I want you to do for core includes a roll back so that you can articulate all the muscles through your spine and through your core in the front to support you. So here's your 
reverse curl. Here's what it's gonna look like. I want you to emphasize the way down. Draw your navel toward your spine, keep your neck relaxed, roll all the way back into the floor and let your arms come up. And then on the exhale, take the hands up, tuck your chin in to roll up and articulate that spine. If you need to on the way up or on the way down, hands right behind your knees to help you make sure you don't hit a speed bump and drop to the ground. Inhale on the way up, exhale as you get started into that roll and lift again at the top, inhale, exhale, coming back, you're drawing that navel right toward your spine, roll down and reach the arms, deep breath in here, and then exhale, hands come up, tuck your chin, and the crown of your head reaches to the ceiling. So it's all articulation, one at a time, each piece of that vertebra moving along the floor. That's your first exercise, and we're gonna go right into your second. So Brenda, now I want you to do one more core exercise, and this one has a little bit more stabilization in it, but really active stabilization. So you have to pay attention and stay focused with me. So Brenda, come down to the floor. I want you to bring your legs up so you're kind of in a dead bug. Your knees are right over your hips, hands are right over your shoulders, and then bring the ball in. You're gonna push it right onto your knees, and take your hands and press, long lever, not down here, but push, and you should already feel some work happening. Think about lower back down on the floor so that if there was a towel right underneath you, somebody was pulling it out, they're not gonna get it. Now, I want you to take your legs one at a time and tap your heel down on the floor. So you're gonna go right and left, and that's one, right and left, and two, and so on to 15, or if you lose your form and your low back comes off the floor, stop there. Okay, Brenda, it's time to finish up. I'm gonna give you three multitasking stretches, and here's the first one. So Brenda, as you come back, your feet are close to the wall or the railing, and you're gonna sit back so you feel a great stretch through your hamstrings and your back, and then put your head right through the middle of your arms tuck your ears down and relax. Take a few deep breaths right here. And then bend your knees, drop your feet down and roll up and out of that carefully. Okay, Brenda, for the second stretch, you want a wide stance. Your back heel can be up. What I want you to think about though is pointing your tailbone forward. So you're feeling a stretch right here through that hip pocket already. Then sink down and reach your arms up, bracing your core so you don't feel anything through the small of your back, and lean back slightly to open up. Take a deep breath in, exhale and sink. And hold that for a few breaths, bring your arms down, and return to center. Okay, Brenda, the last stretch I love, and you're gonna love it, and so are your hips. This is a side of body stretch, it's often forgotten. So you're gonna stand about arm's length away from a railing. So you're gonna cross one ankle over your knee and sink back into your hip and make sure your weight's in that supporting heel. And then bring your arm up and over the top and lean away from your support side to open up your side waist, your hip, and your chest. Take a few deep breaths here each time exhaling and sinking a little lower and feel that stretch through your hip and along your torso. Take a couple deep breaths here and then when you're ready come up and out and repeat on the other side. All right Brenda you've finished stretching there's one more thing you have to do to finish your cool down and that is walk dance bike for about five minutes do something so that you get your circulation flowing flush out toxins, and start that recovery before you even finish this workout. And then grab a protein shake so that you have optimal protein synthesis and anti-inflammation from the avocado and the spinach that'll help you get a leg up on your fitness and exercise. So the key flip of the day is prioritize your goals, plan your five components, and then plug that in to the realistic time that you have available today. And to optimize every workout, Brenda, you're gonna make sure you have a protein shake, 
for anti-inflammation, to add that muscle protein synthesis that gives you the powerful results you want, and tastes yummy. Very scientific. Thanks so much for asking, Brenda. Let me know how it goes. So now I'd like to hear from you. Is planning your own workout program confusing for you, or for you, is it something else? Send me your question at flipping50tv.com, and if I choose your question for the show, I'm gonna send you exclusive access to the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women online course, my book, You Still Got It, Girl, and you're gonna get some amazing skincare products from my friends at Anne Marie Skincare. Even if I don't choose your question for the show, I'm gonna send you right away my Muscles in Minutes guide for toning those hard to tone areas. And that's gonna be really helpful for you plugging in the information that we went over today. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to flipping50tv.com and I'll see you on the flip side.